good morning students come to 10th science and see the picture crop of sulfate solution then t all these four crops of solutions so come to the lesson the ninth lesson unit 9 solutions part 2 Now you recall what you learnt in the previous classes. Solution, introduction of solution, solutions in day to day life, components of solutions, binary and ternary solutions, then types of solutions, aqueous and non aqueous solution, saturated, unsaturated and supersaturated solutions, concentrated and dilute solutions. Now, in this class, we are going to see the topic solubility. Solubility is defined as the number of grams of solute that can be dissolved in 100 grams of solvent. Here, the solvent is a definite amount, but the solute is vary. The number of grams of solute that can be dissolved in 100 grams of solvent to form its saturated solution at a given temperature and pressure. For example, 36 gram of NaCl sodium chloride need to be dissolved in 100 gram of water to form a saturated solution at 25 degree Celsius. So, here the solubility of NaCl sodium chloride in water at is 36 uh, gram at 25 degrees Celsius. So, here which is the solute? Sodium chloride is the solute. Which is the solvent? Water. Here some particular gram, number of grams that is 36 gram at a definite some temperature 25 degree Celsius and some other substances are all given here. Here the solubility is mathematically expressed as the solubility is equal to mass of the solute by mass of the solvent into 100. Here which is the solute here? Sodium chloride. Which is the solvent? Water. So, solubility is equal to mass of the solute sodium chloride by mass of the solvent that is mass of the water into 100. Now, come to the next tabulation. Solubilities of some common substances in water at 25 degrees Celsius. First one calcium carbonate CaCO3. Here some particular gram of calcium carbonate 0 0.0013 gram of calcium carbonate that is dissolved in a definite amount here 100 grams of water. The next one 36 gram of NaCl that is dissolve in 100 gram of water. Then 48 gram of ammonia that is dissolve in 100 gram of water. Then 80 gram of sodium hydroxide NaOH that dissolve in 100 gram of water. Then 91 gram of glucose C6 H12O6 glucose that is dissolved in 100 gram of water, 95 gram of sodium bromide NaBr that is dissolved in 100 gram of water and 184 gram of sodium iodide NaI that is dissolved in 100 gram of water. These are all dissolved at that solubility of temperature, definite temperature 25 degree. Celsius, this is the solubility of some of the compounds. Now, what are the factors that are affecting the solubility? There are three main factors which govern the solubility of a solute. The first one they are nature of the solute and solvent. The solubility depends upon the nature of the solute and solvent. For example, sugar or salt, solvent means water or copper sulphate solution, anything. The solubility depends upon the temperature and the solubility depends upon the pressure. The first one, 
solubility that depends upon the nature of the solute and solvent. Here, although water dissolves an enormous variety of substances, for example, water, sugar in water, salt in water, lemon juice in water, here copper sulphate in water. So, the uh, both some of them are ionic and some of them are covalent. It does not dissolve everything. The phrase that scientific scientists often use when predicting finding the solubility is like dissolves like. The, this expression means that this dissolving occurs when similarities between solvent and the solute. For example, a solvent means water and the solute means that is a, a sugar or sodium chloride. So, for, for example, common sulphate, common salt, common salt means sodium chloride. Sodium chloride that is dissolved in water. Come to the picture, see the picture, the salt, salt, common salt, NaCl that dissolves in water. Here, the salt is the polar compound and water is the polar solvent. So, polar compound that is dissolves in polar solvents. So, for example, common salt, salt is the polar compound and it dissolves readily in polar solvent like water. Non-polar compounds are soluble in non-polar solvents. Here, which is the non-polar compound? Fat. Fat is the non-polar compound that dissolve in non-polar solvent, ether, benzene or toluene, anything. See here, so fat dissolves in ether. Fat is a non-polar compound. Non-polar compound dissolves in non-polar solvents, but this non-polar compounds do not dissolve in polar solvents. So, which is the polar solvent here? Water. In the same way, polar compound, which is the polar compound? Common salt. Common salt or magnesium chloride or calcium chloride or aluminum chloride, they do not dissolve in non-polar solvents that is benzene, ether, toluene. So, here then polar compound that a common salt that dissolves in polar solvents like water. The second one, the solubility depends upon the effect of temperature. The first one, solubility of solids in liquids. Come to this picture, the cup, uh, first you take a cup containing water. Now, you put a salt, you have to stir it. This salt is Salt or sugar, the sugar is dissolves in water. Okay, come to the next one, you take warm water, the cup containing a warm water. Now, you add the sugar. Here, the sugar that dissolves quickly in warm water. So, you compare these two, this sugar will dissolve more quickly in warm water than in the ordinary water. This is the solubility of solids in liquid. Solubility of a so solid solute in a liquid solvent increases with increase in temperature. For example, a great amount of sugar will dissolve in warm water than in cold water. So, sugar that suddenly quickly dissolves in warm water than in cold water. So, in endothermic process, the solubility increases with increase in temperature. In exothermic process, the solubility decreases with increase in temperature. This is the solubility of solids in liquids. Then, solubility of gases in liquid. Do you know why is it bubbling when water is boiled? You can see the bubbles in the water when it is boiling. Because of this, solubility of gas in a liquid decreases with increase in temperature. For example, generally water contains dissolved oxygen. Water means H2O, it is split into water, uh, hydrogen and oxygen. When water is boiled, the solubility of oxygen in water decreases. Why it decreases means the oxygen does, that escapes out in the form of bubbles then only the solubility it decreases. 
Now, okay, you come to this picture, you can see that picture that is a polar, that is a penguin and polar bear. So, these are called as the aquatic animals. The aquatic animals that live more in cold region because more amount of dissolved oxygen is present in cold water. So, what you understood from this means the solubility of oxygen is in water is more at low temperature or cold temperature. Can you understood? This shows this what you understood. The solubility of oxygen in water is more at this cold region or cold temperature or low temperature. Now, the third one, the solubility that depends upon the effect of pressure. Tell one example of this effect of pressure. For example, uh, so when a bottle, uh, Sprite bottle, Bavento bottles, okay, you can, when you are opening, the uh, so solubility increases with increase in pressure also. So come to the picture, you can see the picture, here what happens, the pressure increases, the solubility also increases. The effect of pressure is only observed in the case of a solubility of a gas in a liquid. So, here the pressure increases, the solubility of a gas in a liquid is also increases. Now, you have the common examples of this solubility of gas in a liquids or carbonated beverages. For that is, for example, soft drinks, some in a bottle, Pepsi bottle, Bavento bottles, okay. And these are called as a soft, uh, soft drinks. Here the pressure increases with the solubility increase. Here which gases we have all here means it is a carbon dioxide gas. You can see the bubbles. And which acid is present here? Carbonic acid. Okay. So, here this is a soft drinks example. The next one, household cleaners containing a, a solution, con, uh, aqua solution of ammonia. The household cleaners containing ammonia in H3. Then formalin aqua solution of formaldehyde HCHO. So, see, these are the common examples of the solubility of gas in liquids. And this concept can be explained by the Henry's law. So, what do you know about this Henry's law? Henry's law states that the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the pressure of a gas over the solution at a definite temperature. Can you understand? Henry's law state that the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the pressure of a gas over the solution at a some particular temperature and this, this is the Henry's law. This is also explained about the effect of pressure. Now, come to the next topic, concentration of a solution. Now, what do you mean by concentration of the solution? You come to the uh, picture, which, which cup is very concentrated? You can see the first one or second one. The first one, yes. Why? Because here the solute is more than that of the second cup. Here the solute, the amount of the solute is more than the second cup, so, so the concentration is very high. So, the con uh, concentration of a solution may be defined as the amount of solute pres present in a given amount of solution or solvent. Here this is the concentration of a solution, this is the more amount of a solute in a solute, a solute in a solution. This concentration of a solution can be expressed in two different methods. The first method is mass percentage. Okay. What do you mean by mass percentage? How to define? Mass percentage of a solution is defined as the percentage. Percentage by mass of the solute present in the solution. So, mass percentage is equal to mass of the solute. Solute is the sugar or salt anything. Here solution, sugar solution anything. And mass the same formula, the mass percentage is equal to mass of the solute by mass of the solute plus mass of the solvent in 200. For example, 5 percentage of sugar solution. 
5 percentage means 5 gram of sugar and 95 gram of water it made of 100 gram of a solution. Can you understand? 5 percentage of sugar solution means it means 5 gram of sugar in 95 gram of water and you make it can make a solution that is a 100 gram of solution. Here this mass percentage is expressed as WW that is weight per weight. Now come to the uh, cream here terbinafine and hydrochloride cream here that is 1 percentage means this is, is a mass. So, we have to express it as weight per weight it is expressed in mass also that is a it is given as 15 gram. So, mass percentage of a solution is defined as the percentage percentage means 100 by mass of the solute present in a given solution. Now, come to the second one the method volume percentage. Volume percentage is defined as the percentage by volume of the solute. The volume of the solute is in ml present in a given volume of a solution. So, here the volume percentage is equal to volume of the solute by volume of the solution into 100. What is solution here? Volume of the solute plus volume of the solvent. So, the formula volume percentage is equal to volume of the solute by volume of the solute plus volume of the solvent or solution you have to uh, tell solution in 200. For example, uh, 10 percentage by volume of a solution of ethanol in water. What is the meaning of 10 percentage? 10 ml of ethanol in 90, 90 ml of water or it make it make of it made to form a 100 ml of solution. Can you understand? 10 percentage of by volume is equal to 10 ml of ethanol in and 90 ml of water to make to form a 100 ml solution. Look at here both solute ethanol and water both of them are liquids. Can you understand? Here solute and solvent. Solute is ethanol and solvent is water both of them are liquids. Now, you come to this here the usually this volume percentage is expressed as volume per volume that is V by V. We come across in our daily life such as the solutions of syrup, syrup bottles, cough syrup or any other syrup bottle that is expressed in V by V that is volume per volume and household is in factant and the concentration of the ingredients you have to express in V by V, V by V, v means what A volume per volume. But in the same way in ointment, many ointments, okay, skin ointment and any ointment, antacid, antacid means medicines, then soap and these are all the concentration are expressed in as W by W, W per W or weight per weight because it is expressed in mass. So, weight per weight. So, these are about the mass percentage means mass percentage means that is expressed in W per W, but this volume percentage means that is expressed in volume per volume. You can see here that is expressed in volume, you have to express in ml, but in mass percentage that is expressed in gram. In this way, you have to exp express the concentration of concentration of uh, so solution in two methods mass percentage and volume percentage. Here volume percentage means it is uh, given in ml 100 ml here this is mass is given in 15 gram. So, these are about the volume percentage. Yes, now come to the assignment. First one define solubility give example. The second one, what is mass percentage? Give example. The third one, write notes on various factors that affect solubility. And these three questions you have to learn and write one time. Okay, students, thank you.